All right. So now let's look at something real quick. In a foreclosure, here's the foreclosure date. Up until the time, the date of the foreclosure, you can walk in and ask the bank, how much do I owe you? And they say, well, you owe us $101,500. And you can literally lay $101,500 on the table and they have to release the lien because they've taken your money. You have to give them money or you have to give them what's fair that you owe them. The money, the word that means money or fair is called equitable. You have the equitable right to redeem the property. The bank calls me and they say, Raymond, we're taking you to foreclosure in two months from now. And I say, okay, how much do I owe you? And they do the math and they say, well, we got late fees and a attorney fee and you owe me $104,000. I can take $104,000 into Chase, lay it on their counter and go, take me out of the uh, foreclosure court because I'm paying my house off. That is called the equitable right of redemption, all right? Equitable because that's fair. That's what equity means or money. Now, watch this. After foreclosure, there is a law for 365 days that says I can go back in and reclaim my house back. All right. The word for law is statutory so i have the statutory right of redemption that is from the day of the sale for 365 days out statutory right of redemption statutory means there's a law that says i can do this before the foreclosure date it is called equitable because that's what's fair. All right. Now, I want everybody's eyes looking at me because I want to see that you're watching me when I say this. Indiana does not practice the statutory right of redemption for the sheriff sale when you lose your house to foreclosure i had a client once that called me and goes dude i've been putting my head in the sand and thought it would go away but i think my house went to sheriff sale today what can i do and i said pack because that's your only ch choice the law exists we don't use it. Arizona uses it. We don't use it. But the law is on the books. Everybody get what I'm saying? So why is that? Why don't we use it in Indiana? Well, I don't know for a 100% fact, but my guess is, let me answer that by telling you what Arizona's requirements are to, to, to exercise it. If you want to get your house back, you have to let them know prior to the actual court date, and you have to submit a bond equal to one half the value of the house to be able to exercise that. So if I had a money to buy a bond that was worth $50,000 or $300,000, why would I have just not made my house payments so my guess is shauna 
that Indiana doesn't see it as even a possible. I mean, if you could walk in the day after and pay a hundred grand, why didn't you do it the day before? So that is my guess. I don't know why, but I will tell you we do not. Once it goes to the sheriff sale, it is gone. Now, what I want to do is another chapter here real quick because I want you to see the similarities. If your house goes to the tax lien sale, now, different thing here, this is the tax lien. Prior to the tax sale, you can go in and pay your taxes and bring them current and they will take you out of the tax sale. Your right to do that is called, guess what? The equitable right of redemption. Same law. After the tax sale, for 365 days, there is a state law, statutory right of redemption, that says I can go in and pay my back taxes and get my house back. Same law. Same law, same law, right? Now, eyes forward. Indiana does practice the statutory right of redemption for a tax sale. If you fail to pay your real estate taxes and your house goes to auction, you literally can go in after the auction and say, hey, Sarah, I know you bought my house at auction and I missed the auction, I'm sorry. Here's the money and I get to repay Sarah the money she put in and I get my house back. I can redeem it. But I have to pay a penalty and I have to pay Sarah an interest rate because she was the investor. So we do not practice it for foreclosure. We do practice that law for the tax sale. It's the same law on the books. We just don't utilize one of them in Indiana, okay? We'll talk more on the uh, next, when we talk about taxes. So now, let's, there are two new things here in the world that we need to talk about. Um, if you deed your house or it goes to the sheriff sale, and let's say you owed a hundred grand and the bank sells the house for $80,000, you still owe the difference between what the judge said you owed the hundred and the bank only got 80 you still owe that $20,000 deficiency, all right? Now, don't anybody raise your hand, but if you've ever had a car repossessed and they take it to auction, same thing there. You owed five grand, they sold it at the auction for three, you still owe that lender $2,000. That is a deficiency. That is money they loan you. You owe it to them. And they can go after you in a court order and get a deficiency judgment against your person so that you now have to pay back that other 20 somehow. All right? That is the difference between what you borrowed and what they actually got paid back to them at the sale. Now, one other thing, just so that we can talk about it. When that bank takes their house to the sheriff and the sheriff doesn't sell it, doesn't go to sale, 
They'll call the bank and go, hey, man, your house didn't sell. Come get your house. So the bank goes back to the sheriff. They pick up their house and they put it under their arm. And they go back to their bank and they get to the doorstop. And they say, well, Raymond, who we foreclosed on, had an FHA insured loan. That means the government has guaranteed the money to the bank. So the bank literally says, oh, Mr. Government, here's the house. Give us our money because you said Raymond was a good guy and he wasn't. Therefore, we want our money. All right. That's where a HUD home comes from. The bank then say, or the bank says, well, you paid me our money, you take the house. The government then puts the house back on the market as a HUD home. The Department of Housing and Urban Development who oversees the Federal Housing Administration. So when you see a HUD home for sale, in your head, what you now think is, Whoever got foreclosed on prior to that had an FHA loan because that's how HUD got it. If the bank has the house under their arm and they get back to the bank and they go, oh, crap, we underwrote this loan. This is our problem. It now becomes a bank-owned home. So that's where the split comes that a lot of people think. You see houses that are bank-owned homes. And you see HUD homes. That's where that comes from. All right. Is if the HUD or FHA insured that guy, they get the house, they put it back on the market, it becomes a HUD. If the bank, like Fifth Third, underwrote that loan, it becomes Fifth Third's problem. It's now a bank owned home. Now, there's a new product that's recently been around, and I want to make sure we understand what this term means. There is a thing called a short sale. A short sale, the mechanism for the sale works just like a normal sale. Remember, we talked about voluntary alienation that had the deed and all the types of that. A short sale is a normal sale from that standpoint. The only difference is this. The bank is accepting short money than what is owed to them. All right? The bank is accepting less money than is owed to them. So in this $100,000 house we're talking about, because of the market, because it's not all of that, the house is now worth 80. The bank is gonna have to go to foreclosure. They're gonna have to go to sheriff sale. They're gonna have to take it, put it in their stable, hire a broker, pay the broker to sell the house, and they end up getting 80 grand for it, right? Why couldn't they have just taken 80,000 a year ago from a buyer and short-circuited that whole process? That's a short sale. Now, I don't, don't know if I said it clearly enough, so let me go back. <clears throat> 